What's going on, smart people? If you're watching this video, that means I have not yet been assassinated for my recent discovery that I went over in the last video. Right now, I am seeking refuge off of the coast of Somalia under the alias of Albert Feynman. But that does not mean that the daily videos stop. That's just what Dr. Phil would want. What is this video on? Oh. Today is September 18th, 2018, which means I have been in grad school for physics for a little over a month now, so I thought I'd take some time to go over some of the similarities and differences with undergrad that I've experienced so far. I'm going to kick things off with some similarities because it'll actually lead into what makes grad school so different so far. The first glaring similarity is that we're all Pisces. Just kidding. It's the material that we're going over. Pretty much everything that we've gone over so far in grad school, I've learned to some extent in undergrad, which sort of makes sense, right? I mean, it'd be weird if you go through all of your undergrad, then you get to grad school and you're like, no, by the way, none of that shit matters. Also, like undergrad, we still have homework and we still have exams. I actually just found out very recently that for our classes we still have TAs. I don't yet know who TAs grad students, but they exist, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Okay, let's move on to the differences. I'm sure I could find a couple more similarities between grad school and undergrad so far, but they'd probably be just as obvious as the ones I already brought up, so I'll leave those as an exercise for the watcher. The first difference is the assumption of prior knowledge that the professor has for all of the grad students, which is obviously fair. I mean, we literally all have physics degrees. It would be weird for the professor to have to be like, okay, today we're going to learn how to add vectors together. But just because we've all seen the material before doesn't mean that we don't still go over it. It just means that now we can go more in depth and we might have more intelligible questions that we wouldn't have had or didn't have the first time around. Also, in undergrad, when you're just learning the material, your professor will assign easier homework problems just to help you get it. But in grad school, you're supposed to have gotten it, which means the professor will ask harder homework problems, which leads to the second difference in that the homework problems take me much longer to solve than they did in undergrad. I spend, I think I spent maybe seven hours on my quantum mechanics homework. You know, so instead of your homework saying, find the commutator of position and momentum, you already know how to do that. So the homework's going to say something like, find the commutator of this exponentiated operator in terms of a power series and then prove by induction that this relationship holds for k plus one or something like that. Something much more abstract and it's... It's different, but I'm speaking in averages here. I mean, my math methods homework doesn't take as long as my classical mechanics homework, which doesn't take as long as my quantum mechanics homework. So I'm just kind of kind of meeting in the middle here. But and there were some undergraduate homework assignments that would take me that long, but overall graduate homework just takes me much longer than in undergrad. And I think that that's probably the biggest difference so far between my courses in grad school versus undergrad. And I don't know if that's because maybe we're supposed to be working together on our homework assignments. I don't do that. I like to work, but I don't like working with other people. That sounds bad. I don't like figuring things out with other That sounds just as bad. I just don't like feeling robbed of those, oh, moments. And I'll be going over how that's working out for me probably tomorrow when I go over the grades that I've been getting on my homework so far. But the last big difference that I want to bring up is sort of the customizability of the classes. For example, today we got to vote on when we should have our first midterm and then at the beginning of the semester one of my professors says that he's going to be absent for certain days so we voted on adding an extra day every single week to make up for that and that's something that I don't know if you would get away with in undergrad because normally it would be a Tuesday Thursday class our professor says I'm gonna by the way I'm gonna miss some days so now every week we also have class on Wednesday which is uh, which is a bit different and then also leading into that customizability difference our professors really survey the room to make sure that we're getting something out of the lectures so that they're not just feeding us material that we already know which leads me to think that if we were to stop them and say hey we're, we're good on this, that we could just move on to other material. We could reach a lot more material if we wanted to. So in a sense, we have the power to steer the courses towards certain directions more readily than we could in undergrad. But that's going to do it for this video. I don't want to try too hard to find similarities and differences between grad school and undergrad because there's bound to be more that pop up as time goes on. So there will probably be iterations of this video over the next couple years, which I'm looking forward to doing. And this video was on course similarities and differences alone. So let me know in the comments section if there are any others that you can think of. And I'll see you guys there.